I'm back with another video for the mobile game series where we will learn how to create from scratch a brand new game for mobile devices. The theme of the game, as many of you already know, is Pokemon. It will be inspired by Greek mythology, with the main character being a young version of Hercules. So the game will be a small simulation of a real Pokemon game and therefore we will need an area with grass where random creatures will appear, a turn-based battle system, a level up system and maybe, I say maybe, the ability of capturing and fighting with new creatures. We will see how the series is going and I will decide in the future. In addition to that, the purpose of this video is to learn how to create a mobile game and therefore I will also show you how to implement ads for monetization, analytics, in-app purchases, leaderboards, achievements and also how to connect to the Google services in order to save the game data to the cloud. If that sounds interesting, you only need to click on the red subscribe button to support the channel and let me do the rest of the work for you. In the last couple episodes we created the little Hercules with all his walking animations in all four directions. We did that with animation trees, so if you want to learn how this was done, you can click here and have a look. Also smash like. Right now we can move Herc only with the arrow keys of the keyboard, but it will be for mobile, right? And what do we need for mobile movement? Exactly, touch controls. In other words, we will have a canvas with four buttons that will allow us to move around by touching them. Let's start by creating the canvas. I usually jump into the UI menu and select whichever UI element I need. Doing so will also generate the canvas for your game and also the event system game object. In all of my projects I like to have the canvas at the top and the event system as the first child. I said child. What the heck? Here we go. Now we have to consider that there are a ton of different mobile devices, each with different screen sizes and resolutions. Our goal here is to have the UI consistent to all of the devices. To do that we just change the canvas scalar reference resolution to 1920 by 1080 which actually is HD. I also found out that having the match slider in the middle at 0.5 gives you the best results. For the reference pixels per unit, you could choose 32, 16 or leave it at 100. It has mostly to do with the sprite size that you are using. I will leave it at 100 at this point. Ok whoa, do you see how huge the canvas is together with a button? Little Herc is just there, like a little ant or something. To make him feel better, we only have to change the canvas render mode to screen space camera and select the main camera of the game. Now the whole canvas fits inside of the camera view and you can directly see how your UI looks like together with your other sprites. I learned this the hard way when I was creating my first games and this whole canvas settings, especially for mobile, was just a mess in my head. Now I feel very confident to show you how it's really done though. <laughs> I mean after all I have 5 games on Play Store, you know? Moving on. If you switch to the 3D mode and change the plane distance of the canvas, you can see how far away or near to the camera it actually is. Zero means it is directly on top of the camera. The next very very smart thing you can and should do is to create another sorting layer, name it canvas and choose it as the main layer of your canvas. That way all of your UI elements are better organized and you can have full control of where and how they are seen on your scene. Ok, we are fine with the canvas for now and can finally focus on the buttons. One of the most important parts when placing your UI in the scene is to also change the anchor point correctly. This has a huge impact on how your game looks like and can either destroy it or save it. Ok, as you see, here is the first mistake. The button will not show up on the game scene. Stupid button, where are you? I will find you, but till then and since we are on the main camera inspector, let's make some changes here as well. First, I like to have a total black background, just like my coffee. Next, I change the size to 6 or 7, but to decide I will need to have more background objects in the scene and not just the character. I also switch off HDR. Back to the button. I didn't forget about you, mister. The reason we couldn't see it was that we left the canvas at position 0 on top of the camera. Changing it to 5 should do the trick perfectly. 
for your and my surprise, I have another cool trick that will help you out a lot when building your menus. I create an empty game object that will be the father of all similar UI elements and place it at the right position. Here I name it move buttons, assign to it the button from earlier and make it a child of the canvas. When moving it around, you can obviously see that the button moves together with it and that's totally fine. Let me explain. Since I want all the buttons to be on the bottom left corner, I move the empty game object exactly there and make sure to switch its anchor point also to the left button corner of the screen. That way we make sure that despite the screen resolution or mobile phone we are playing on, the buttons will always be at this position at the same distance from the corner. Isn't this awesome? So simple yet very powerful. Here you see me trying to create the rest of the direction buttons. Let's click on play and see how it looks like. Not bad and the cool part is that we can change the game resolution while playing. As I mentioned before, the buttons always stay at the right position and are ready for all players to enjoy, even if they have a phone like this. For the next step, we will need to open up the asset store and search for the standard assets provided by Unity. There are a lot of useful tools inside, but the one we want is the cross-platform input package. It will definitely make our life easier when coding the movement of Hercules. When importing, I deselect everything except the cross-platform input. When you are done, you will see a new folder in your project with everything you have imported. Look up for the access touch button script and assign it to all of your buttons that are responsible for movement. For the up button, the axis name should be vertical, the value 1 and the two speed variables should have a high value such as 10,000. For the down button, it is the same thing but for the axis value we type in minus 1. For moving right, we leave the axis name to horizontal and the value to 1. Finally, for the left button, we only change the value to minus 1. And we are done with the setting up the buttons in order to have a smooth movement. Time to open up the script from the previous video. On the top, we write using Unity Standard Assets dot cross platform input. And if you remember, we used just input dot get access raw, which detected the movement from our keyboard. Now we can replace this line with cross platform input manager dot get access and by doing so we no longer need the keyboard. Our movement is generated only through the UI buttons we created. Time to see this in action. And it failed. And again. And again. The reason why it didn't work was that I was stupid enough to forget that the editor folder from the standard assets is also needed to make this work. Sorry guys, but you have to import it as well if you are facing problems and forgive me. If your console shows errors after the import, just see which file causes them and delete it. In my case, it's the water folder and since I'm very sure that no water is currently needed, I destroy it. Boom, and the errors are gone. Ah, such a nice feeling when finally everything is working perfectly. You see that right now I'm clicking on the buttons with my mouse, but when playing on the phone, it is the same as touching them with your fingers. In the next episode, I will show you how the Unity Remote app is working and why you should be using it to make your development process even faster. Time for my favorite part. Art. You know, a game should not only be functional, but also presentable to the gamer. Therefore, I will quickly change the button icons and replace them inside of the game. Some additional changes to the sprite and the work is done. How do you like it so far? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe. It really means a lot. And having such an awesome community like ours that is so passionate about game development makes me the happiest person on earth. With that said guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. In the meantime, watch these two epic videos and have a nice day. Ciao!